Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. My guest today is Lisa Copeland. Lisa is a love coach and a dating expert specifically for women over 50. She likes to help women to feel lovable and empowered in the dating game and find the right the man of their dreams, the right man for their lives. So I'm really happy to have you here, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you, Margaret. It's wonderful to be here with you. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I say these words to describe you, and, and all I can say is that I've been working with you now for you know a couple of couple of years. We've been doing um, chats, yeah. and I really think that 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 your mission statement about making women feel lovable and empowered is like the heart of everything you do. And I really thank you for that. It's really powerful. Thank you for recognizing it. It's uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing I help them with because if we don't feel lovable, we don't feel empowered, and we get very frustrated in the in the dating game and in life. Yeah, well, and your website is findequalityman.com, and I know there you spend a lot of time, and you have some free things you give away to help women, you know, d- d- sort of determine the right things to do when they're looking to get back into the dating game, or or just to build a relationship with with a man, with a guy, and. I'd like you, though, to just kind of put a different hat on for a minute and tell us what uh, you think a woman over 50 should not do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I think the first thing is to have an unrealis- unrealistic expectation mm-hmm. of who a man is in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. Because we go online and we see, there's my grandpa, there's my <laughs> Uncle Joe. You know, because- I don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But we do. And my son yeah. brought that home one time. My kids are my greatest teachers sometimes. Yeah, they my are. son brought that home one time when before um, Facebook, my in my um, high school reunion happened and I saw pictures online and I thought, oh my God, those people look so old. I don't look that old. And I said to him, do they look this old? And or do, do I look this old? And he said to me, no comment, mom. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, this sweet. This, this tr- the truth hurts. But okay, so that's the first thing, to have an unrealistic view of what you look like or what the men that you're looking for might look like. And just to be real, just to get you know honest with yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's number one. And yes. Number two is, is relying only with to online dating for finding a man. Yeah. Online dating can be wonderful and it can be frustrating yeah. and it has highs and lows and you need other ways to meet men, especially men in real life. I teach women all the time how to meet a man in real life and it's learning how to flirt again. And I've had women who said to me, I can't do online dating. And they, we worked on it and they ended up finding boyfriends and husbands. So you, yeah. you need more than one way to find the right man for you. And I know that you do a regular newsletter for your subscribers and I, I know I get, I receive it. And in those newsletters, you're always giving this kind of advice, like seven places to find the, you know, a man that, ha- that shares your values, shares your interests. So that's a really good thing that you provide actionable <laughs> I try to, yes, yes. Yeah. Because if you're just going to read information, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. I guess that's the that might be our third thing. Although I was thinking of something else, so we might have four. But our third, your third thing might be thinking the guy's going to fall out of the sky. And yeah. I've had a lot of women say, "Oh, he'll show up when the time <laughs> is right. The universe is this way, and the yeah. stars that way." No, you have even with the law of attraction. I'm a big believer in it, but you have to take action to make it happen. And a lot of women don't take action. What they do is they focus on what's wrong versus what's right and what's possible versus the possibilities, truthfully. And and what we focus on is what comes to us. So that's probably the third thing that women um, are not doing right. And that's just complaining and not taking action. You know, just just on that note, it's really um, an interesting point because I think a lot of women in their 60s are, we're very good communicators. And most women, I mean, a lot of people, if you ask, will say they're more introvert than extrovert, but most women know how to talk and start a conversation. And it's something that we get so sensitive about. And I, it happened to me a couple of weeks ago, I was in a bookstore. And of course, you know, bookstores are great places to meet people. If you like to read books, I mean, it's like, 
you're going to meet people. And there was a guy uh, looking at some magazines and um, I was standing next to him and I made some comment, you know, like, um, um, you, know, what you, you know, what are you reading or something like that. I mean, it was just to be friendly. And he immediately said, well, my wife and I, <laughs> and he showed me, my wife and I are looking for books. Like, no, it's, and it was so funny. I almost laughed at him because it was like, I wasn't even thinking that. It was just like chatty. And I'm saying that we sometimes would then go home and say, oh my gosh, I was so rejected. Yes. But it wasn't that at all. It was just like, he was just telling, we're on the right hand, but he was telling me he was married and that was it. And um, so I think you have to be a little bit strong skinned and get out there, like you say, and take action, <laughs> take a chance. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. really do. What's the fourth? You had a fourth one. <coughs> Forgive me. I also I have you've a got cold. A cough. Oh my. <laughs> well, it's okay. We've got three and that's actually quite enough because. No, if, I can give you a you fourth, fourth, fourth. one. Okay. I'm happy to. Okay. Um, so the fourth one. Yeah. Oh, it went out of my head. Now, wait a minute. We'll have a fourth one here in a second. It's got what t- not to do. Okay. So a fourth one is um, when you go on a first date what a lot of people do is they think they're already in a relationship. So when a guy asks them out for a second date, they think that man should be texting them every 10 seconds or emailing or calling them at between that first and second date. And you're not yeah. in a relationship. Yeah. You're still in an exploratory time. And when you start getting aggravated about that, it makes you come across as really needy or demanding. And then that ends up turning a man off who could be a potentially good man for you because you're concerned. And the best thing you can do is date more than one man at a time until you become exclusive. And that way you will um, not get so hung up on whether he's writing you between the first and the second date. You know, that is actually excellent advice. And I think part of it comes back to the fact that as you get a little older, you, I mean, you're the expert on this, but I mean, I'm just sort of guessing that you do have an urgency about you though, that you feel if you meet yeah. someone that really like, you know, likes you and you have a really good feeling on that first date, that's it. That's my future husband. That's the man of my dreams. You know, it, <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't work, but you do have this urgency, don't you think, as you get a little older to, you know, if you're looking to find yes. the right person. Yes, people do. They feel time, like the clock is ticking. Yeah. Like when people's hormones were ticking back in the day for babies, although we had babies <laughs> younger. We'll talk yeah. about our kids, but yeah. they have that ticking time bomb for the kids, uh, for babies. And we do have that. We think, oh my God, I only have so yeah. much time. I'm going to yeah. look this way or that way and someone's going to like me. It's true. Well, a friend of mine's mother is in a, she's like 90. She's been in five relationships. Yes, they've died in the, in the, <laughs> independent uh-huh. living she's in but she has had relationships since she's 90 and these men have loved her from her 70s on you know so it is okay. possible at any time to find love well you know you are the ultimate positive dating coach love love coach and dating expert i love it and thank you for sharing that i mean it's very simple straightforward action guys i mean this is the way to do it and if you want to find out more about what lisa um offers in terms of her own consultancy and and her and she's got so much stuff online that you can get for free um go to findaqualityman.com great website and uh lisa feel better hope you do and thank you so much for being here (laughs) thanks margaret (laughs) take care If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our 60 and Me YouTube channel and also visit our website. We are a strong and dynamic community of women over 60. We're challenging aging stereotypes and every day we share fascinating stories, interesting questions and great conversation.